everyone and welcome to our channel. Today we'll tell you all about Asiana Airlines flying to Melbourne again, Air Japan expanding its services, and lastly some Air Canada news. So without further ado, let's begin! The South Korean company Asiana Airlines is going to start flying between Melbourne and Seoul during the next season. Starting on December 26, Asiana's A350-900 planes will offer direct flights to Incheon Airport. Every Tuesday and Thursday, this service will fly. Flights will leave from Melbourne at 10 p.m. tonight so that they can get to Seoul by the next morning. Asiana Airlines said that they'll start flying between Melbourne Airport and Seoul Incheon Airport during certain times of the year in December. The full-service airline will use an Airbus A350 to make two direct trips a week between Melbourne Airport and Seoul, which is the capital of South Korea. Australia is home to the Melbourne Airport. Seoul is an important business hub for the whole world. It's the gateway to one of the world's manufacturing powerhouses and the place where Korean pop music began. Seoul, which has more than 9 million people, is a great example of all these things. The first flight will leave Melbourne at 10 p.m. on December 26 and arrive at Incheon the next morning. After that date, these flights will happen every Tuesday and Thursday. According to Jim Powershows, Chief of Aviation at Melbourne Airport, the arrival of Asiana will give people in Victoria easy access to one of the most important places in Asia. Jim says the new straight route will make it possible for tourists and exporters to get to South Korea without going through another place. This is going to be a big plus. Victoria has increasingly close business links to South Korea with companies making significant investments in our state, such as the Hanwha Defense Facility at Geelong, he said. Melbourne Airport's own ties to South Korea have been growing, with one of the country's largest companies, Lot, taking over operation of the airport's duty-free business in June. He further said, We're excited to welcome Asiana to Melbourne and to add Seoul to our growing network. We expect this seasonal service will prove popular and we're hopeful it'll pave the way for regular year-round flights in the future. Now that this information is out, Melbourne Airport is likely to be the first airport in Australia to reach its foreign capacity before COVID starts. International traffic had reached 95% of what it had been in 2019 by October 2023, and it had grown by 47% since October 2022. Chief Executive Officer of Melbourne Airport, Lori Argus, thanked her staff for the result and said that the next month would be very important for the recovery process. We're on track to bring international seat numbers back above 2019 levels well ahead of forecast and ahead of other Australian airports, she said. Higher capacity typically means lower prices, so this is great news for consumers, and with an average daily international flight worth $154 million a year to the Victorian economy, it's also great news for the state. Air Japan will be the first low-cost airline to fly medium-distance flights. It's set to start flying in 2024. But because of this, it is said it will be spreading to another place in Asia so that customers can have more options during the early stages of the launch. United Airlines said that Air Japan will start operating officially on February 9, 2024. This comes after many years of planning. There will be five trips a week by Air Japan between Tokyo Narita International Airport and Bangkok Suvarnabhumi Airport. In February, ANA plans to start its new project, which will include flying on medium-haul routes. On these routes, though, the carrier will have to deal with tough competition. Air Japan was created to give people a new way to travel that lets them customize the services they need. This is like a lot of other low-cost companies that sell cheap tickets and make a lot of money from extras. These include food, better seating, the choice of seats, checked bags, early boarding, and other perks. This is not an entire list, though. Beginning on February 22, 2024, Air Japan will start flying between Tokyo Narita and Seoul Incheon as part of its first set of routes. This means that there will be five flights a week on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. The flight numbers for it will be NQ-21 and NQ-22. The planes will leave from Narita at 10.55 and get to Incheon at 13.30. Starting at 14.40, the plane will leave from Incheon and get back to Narita at 16.45. Air Japan will use the Boeing 787 Dreamliner from the very start of its activities. In order to offer people a good price, American Airlines made these 787s so that they can only carry economy class passengers. The 787 Dreamliner's impact is something that people question about a lot. 
Well, Boeing made it very efficient so that airlines can open up new routes while still making money. This lets people go straight to the places they want to go in the most comfortable way possible. Let's move forward to Air Canada news. Air Canada has announced that it will be adding more trips to Asia in the next few months in order to meet the growing demand for its services. Starting in the middle of December, there will be up to 11 flights a week between Vancouver and Hong Kong. This is a strong response to the high volume of travel that happens around the holidays during the Lunar New Year. But this rise is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Air Canada's big plans for the winter, which would almost triple the number of flights between Canada and Japan. In the same way, there will be daily trips between Vancouver and Bangkok during the busy winter months, and the season will last until the beginning of May 2024. The airline said it would start adding more seats to its Asia-Pacific network in the middle of December and keep doing so until the end of summer 2024. Going across the Pacific Ocean by plane from Vancouver will be easier to get to places like Hong Kong, Japan, Thailand, and Singapore. From the following year, up to 57 flights per week will be available between Canada and Asia during the winter, according to Mark Gallardo, Executive Vice President of Revenue and Network Planning. Up to 64 flights per week will be available during the summer. With this change, there will be 11 flights a week from Vancouver International Airport to Hong Kong, as well as daily flights to Bangkok, a new route to Singapore, and some routes with bigger planes. Air Canada's Asia services continue to reflect strong demand, and we're boosting capacity to this geographic area as we deploy our international diversification strategy, said Gallardo. Air Canada has not yet announced how much the expanded flights will cost. Some of Canada's best chefs work for Air Canada's foreign services, these include award-winning chefs from Vancouver, David Hawksworth and Vikram Vige, and well-known chefs from Montreal, Antonio Park and Jerome Ferrer. A famous Canadian chef named Veronique Rivest has chosen a group of great wines to go with the food adventure. Aeroplan is Canada's best loyalty program, and Air Canada customers can earn and spend points in it. Eligible Aeroplan customers can also get priority check-in, use of the Maple Leaf lounges, priority boarding, and other benefits, such as access to Air Canada's private signature suite at YVR and Toronto Pearson. Regular flights are run by Air Canada to more than 180 hubs in Canada, the U.S., and other countries in six continents. It has a four-star grade from Skytrax. Members can earn or spend points on the world's biggest airline partner network, which includes 45 airlines, as well as on a wide range of goods, hotels, and car rentals. Air Canada Cargo is the company's freight subsidiary. It uses Air Canada's passenger and freighter planes to connect freight to hundreds of destinations on six continents. Air Canada wants all of its activities around the world to have net zero emissions by 2050. So, Air Canada's growth in the Asia-Pacific region shows how flexible the company is and how committed it is to connecting people around the world. The airline wants to change the way people move between countries by adding new routes and increasing the number of flights. They want to do this by giving passengers smooth and luxurious experiences. As it navigates the skies over Asia, Aviation Canada will continue to play a key role in the evolving world of air travel. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this video.